This is KGW News at Noon. This afternoon, we start with the latest number of COVID-19 cases in the Pacific Northwest. Oregon has more than 1,000 confirmed cases across 28 counties. 27 people have died. So far, more than 20,000 people have been tested. In the meantime, Washington has almost 8,000 positive cases out of 87,000 tests. As of today, 343 people there have died. If we look nationally, there are more than 347,000 coronavirus cases and 10,000 deaths. As Sam Brock tells us, the Trump administration warns this could be the hardest week we've seen since the outbreak began. With multiple states heading into what experts believe will be make or break weeks in the fight against COVID-19, overnight President Trump trying to put a positive spin on an escalating situation. We're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. But just 24 hours earlier, the president admitting there'll be a lot of death, unfortunately. An assessment echoed by his top health advisors. The next week is going to be our Pearl Harbor moment. It's going to be our 9-11 moment. The president also doubling down on his calls to use the anti-malaria drug hydroxychloroquine, even though there's no evidence it's effective against COVID-19. What do you have to lose? They say take it. Uh, I'm not looking at it one way or the other, but we want to get out of this. If it does work, it would be a shame if we didn't do it early. Weighing in when Dr. Fauci of the Coronavirus Task Force was later asked about the drug. And would you also weigh in on this issue of hydroxychloroquine? What, what do you think about this and what is, the, what is the medical evidence? That question? Yeah. Well, I, I Maybe 15, the doctor. 15 times. Alarming new projections point to peaks in New York, Detroit and New Orleans in a matter of days. Nine states are still refusing to enact full stay-at-home orders, including Iowa. If additional action is necessary to protect the health and safety of Iowans, I will do so. But the Surgeon General saying it is vital to stop the spread. Give us a week or two if you can. We want you to do it for 30 days, but even in those nine states, give us what you can so we can get this peak and start to come down on the other side. On Sunday, many turning to their faith, but some ignoring the science of social distancing. In Louisiana, one church holding their usual Sunday mass, led by Pastor Tony Spell, who was arrested last month for holding services despite a ban on large gatherings. They would rather come to church and worship like free people than they have live like prisoners in their homes. Here in Florida, the governor of the state drawing heavy criticism for saying he doesn't have the authority to close down houses of worship. Of the 15 states with populations most vulnerable to this virus, 11 of them, mainly here in the South, have religious exemptions. In Miami, Sam Brock, NBC News. Both Oregon and Washington are stepping in to help New Yorkers. Over the weekend, Governor Kate Brown announced she's sending 140 ventilators to New York. Governor Andrew Cuomo tweeted in response, quote, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. New York State will repay the favor when Oregon needs it. Governor Brown says she decided to send the ventilators because Oregon is in a better position right now. She says the state has about 800 available, but we still need more personal protective equipment or PPE for our health care workers. In the meantime, Washington Governor Jay Inslee is sending more than 400 ventilators to New York. Governor Inslee says Washington has enough for its current number of patients and recently bought more than 750 additional ventilators. Those should arrive in several weeks when the state needs them most. You may have noticed more people wearing face masks at the grocery store or walking around in neighborhoods. That's because the CDC has changed its guidelines. Since more evidence shows infected people can spread the virus even if they aren't having symptoms, the CDC recommends you wear a face mask when you go out in public. It can be as simple as a bandana, a scarf, or a handkerchief. The CDC stresses medical masks should be reserved for healthcare workers. It's also important to remember masks only prevent you from spreading the disease, not from getting it. Cassidy Quinn recently made a tutorial on how to do it yourself with that mask. So if you'd like to watch the video, we will send you a link right to your phone. Just text the word mask to 503-226-5111. Again, text the word mask. Please don't call. 
The pandemic is putting millions of Americans out of work, but it's also taking a toll on local governments. The city of Portland says it could lose $100 million in revenue that would normally come from things like hotel taxes. Lindsay Nadrich spoke to the city's budget director. How long this health crisis goes will determine how quickly the city of Portland can bounce back. Um, the challenge that we're experiencing is not just that this is really sort of unprecedented in terms of the impact that's having on our revenues, but also in terms of the uncertainty. Um, the longer we are in this crisis, um, the more significant the impact will be on our um, city finances. Jessica Kennard is the city budget director. She estimates the city could see a loss of anywhere from $40 million to $100 million or more because of COVID-19. That's money that would normally go to the general fund, which is used to pay for things like police and fire, the Parks Bureau and other city services. Tourism is down. So the most immediate loss comes from taxes the city isn't getting right now from hotels and people staying in other lodging facilities. People are also driving less, so the Bureau of Transportation isn't seeing as much money from gas taxes or parking meters. Things have changed astoundingly <laughs> over the last couple months. The Parks Bureau also took a big hit with the immediate closures of community centers, pools, and gyms. That alone could be a loss of $900,000. The revenue that flows into the Parks Bureau for their recreational services is about half funded by the fees that they collect by, by the very facilities that are closed right now. The city had to lay off 750 people. The majority were from the Parks Department. And another 200 people were supposed to start seasonal jobs that aren't happening now either. This is uh, a time of great uncertainty for everybody and heightened anxiety for everybody. And so, um, you know, we're working closely with the mayor's office and our chief human resource officer and, and, and trying to be really thoughtful about, about approaching any, any sort of more significant labor actions. Jessica says they won't know just how bad the financial impact of the coronavirus outbreak will be until this is all over but says they're doing the best they can to adjust and figure out what it means for city services moving forward. Portland is expected to get $100 million in disaster aid from the more than $2 trillion relief package. I'm Lindsay Nadrich, KGW News. All right, let's answer some viewer questions. This viewer wants to know where can I go to take the test for COVID-19? The answer, your doctor has to order a test for you first and then can direct you on where to take it. Next question is from a viewer named Candace. She wants to know, have our Oregon leaders stated what criteria needs to be met before the stay home, stay safe orders are lifted? No, we reached out to the governor's office for this. They said it would be premature to come off with any cutoff points right now. We must all continue to stay the course until the public health to Oregonians has passed. And our last question, does loading up on vitamin C help prevent catching the virus? The answer here is no. While some doctors are treating patients with large amounts of vitamin C right now, there's no evidence that taking vitamin C will help prevent infection from the coronavirus. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. We do our very best to answer them and to read some of the questions that we've already answered. Just go to kgw.com forward slash answers.